Hey everybody, this is Collector Dude. I'm back. This is kind of like part three and then part one of the next book for everything coming out in August because I wasn't able to finish it. It was just a few books, but I ran out of time. So let's add this on to it and get into the Star Wars stuff coming out in June. Here we go with Star Wars Obi-Wan. That's cool how they got the glow there. That's just white with the blue on the outside. Really shiny, bright, glowing. Here we got Star Wars Obi-Wan number three of five. The Battle of a Abrion Bridge. While continuing to, to wait out a nasty sandstorm on Tatooine, Obi-Wan reflects on one of his most grueling experiences in the Clone Wars. It's a memory full of pain and bloodshed, and one that has lasting consequences. The battle also reminds Obi-Wan of an age-old question he has long wrestled with throughout his life. What is a Jedi's true purpose in war? Hmm. All right. I wonder how this is going to go on with the new Obi-Wan series and everything. I'm hearing bad things about it. I'm hearing okay things about it. I'm hearing like, yeah. So I'm not sure what's going on with it. But the, are the books better than the actual movies that they're putting out, the TV show or the series? I don't know. I haven't even seen it yet. And I still have to finish Mandalorian. So here we go with Mandalorian. Star Wars The Mandalorian. That's a cool cover. Number two, it says, Battle with the Beastly Mudhorn. Having tracked down a valuable quarry, the Mandalorian must now contend with thieving bandits. Will the Mandalorian battle it out with the Jawas, or is an alliance in the cards? I don't know. We'll see. Okay, now we got Star Wars, number 26. Very cool cover. Real simple there. It's cool how the white and everything like that goes all into the background there. Nice. Okay, the way we got going on. The path to victory, it says. The rebel fleet is reunited at last, and Leia Organa, Mon Mothma, and the other Alliance leaders send a strong message to the galaxy that the resistance to Palpatine, Palpatine's or Palpatine's rule remains as strong as ever. Meanwhile, Lady Kriar, Kira, of Crimson Dawn has activated her sleeper agents across the galaxy, instructing them to cause chaos for the Empire by any means necessary. Ooh. Now we got Star Wars with Darth Vader, number 25. Cool. Let's see what we got going on. What What is Greg Peck writing, or Peck writing? The Dark Lord of the Sith relentlessly tracks a corrupt Imperial governor, Hmm. But is Vader still driven by his quest for order? Or has his encounters with the shades from the past awoken new motivations? Uh. Meanwhile, new f few figures in the galaxy are more different than Sabi, handmaiden of Padme Amidala, and Ochi of Bastoon, assassin of the Sith. So when they're forced to work together in Vader's ambit, and the knives inevitably come out, Who's still standing at the end? Okay. And what will that lonely soul have to say when Vader returns? Uh. Okay, now we got Han Solo and Chewbacca. Nice cover. Han Solo and Chewbacca, number five, it says. Let's keep a little optimism here. But optimism is hard to keep. Why, with the Millennium Falcon gone and Han and Chewie in their toughest spot ever. Greedo is back and boy is he mad. Okay, yeah. Featuring the, the returns of Marshall, Buck Vankto, and Kel Tana. Which one is going to get their hands on Han first? All this and more in the rip-roaring conclusion of The Crystal Run. Okay. So many added stuff. You like... I don't know if there were hints, and when you read these, I wonder if there's were there hints in some of the movies. I guess you'd have to go back and look and see if the Crystal Run was ever mentioned or something. I'm not sure. I'm not like really into it so much where I just remember every line and every word and everything. But it'd be cool. Like when they, when, I like it when they add stuff to fill in spots. Like this stuff is like filling in spots that weren't in the movie or after the movie and stuff, or is just before the movie. We we'll have to see. 
I can't remember exactly when it started and stuff like that. Like this was supposed to be, he was supposed to be looking for his son and everybody who hid him from him. So this is like in between stuff. So I like stuff like that when they do that. Okay, now we got uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 25. That's a cool helmet. Wow. Okay, Bounty Hunters versus the Knights of Ren. Dingar is leading to Onga's bounty hunter crew on a desperate attempt to break into the Crimson Dawn stronghold, and he's also leading them into a trap. Uh-oh. Meanwhile, Valance has found new purpose as Darth Vader, Vader's secret weapon. But how far will he be willing to go to protect an Imperial officer from assassins? Uh, I don't know. We shall find out, I guess. If you're reading it. Now we got Star Wars Dr. Aphra number 23. Okay. Santa Starros and her team are determined to rescue Dr. Aphra at any cost. But everyone's keeping secrets. And the Spark Eternal has plans of his own, of its own. Okay. Now we got one book here. Now available in one book. The Complete Collection. The Uncanny X-Men Trading Cards. The Complete Series. Includes bonus cards, it says. Cool. I used to collect cards a lot years ago. I had a lot of them. Okay, celebrate the 30th anniversary of artist Jim Lee's legendary X-Men trading cards art with his annotated digest size collection of the complete 1992 set. It showcases the front and back of all 105 celebrated trading cards in the set, including Wolverine, Storm, Cyclops, Magneto, and Deadpool, along with select scans of Lee's original and digitally Remastered art. Cool. You see the Uncanny X-Men trading cards, the complete series. That's cool. And one last thing I want to do on this part, in this book here, is go through this. Face front, true believers, and treasure the celebration of the incredible career of Stan Lee. This is cool. The best Marvel stories by Stan Lee. Omnibus hardcover. It's look. It's priced at a hundred dollars. Canada, it's one hundred twenty-five bucks, and it goes on sale October eleventh, two thousand twenty-two. I'm going to say nineteen. Okay, look at this. I guess this is another cover here. Direct market cover here, with Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four on it, and then this one here. That's cool. It's written by Stan Lee, obviously, and then it got Barry Windsor Smith and Larry Lieber, Tom DeFalco. All the different people doing the pencils. It just says it's more than 70 years of stories featuring dozens of Lee's beloved co-creations, including Spider-Man, Iron Man, the Hulk, the Avengers, Daredevil, and Nick Fury, all in his signature senses-shattering style. These astonishing tales of suspense, horror, fantasy, romance, comedy, cowboys, superheroics, and more prove beyond doubt that Stan is the man. Look at all these titles down. I got Incredible Hulk. 1962 number one avengers 1963 number one and then 15 through 16 it just keeps going on and on x-men sergeant fury fantastic four annual patsy walker daredevil captain america thor silver surfer amazing spider-man savage she-hulk you get some captain america stuff in there amazing adult fantasy amazing fantasy tells the astonished thor silver surfer a lot of cool stuff spectacular spider-man amazing spider-man Marvel's 70th, 75th anniversary celebration and amazing Spider-Man newspaper strip. Very cool. I remember that stuff when I was, when I look at the papers when I was a kid, get the papers, I'd see the Spider-Man strip in there. I loved that. But that book looks really cool. You expect to spend 100 bucks unless you save something on a discount. If you pre-order it, I don't know if it was a pre-order, you can get a discount on it. I'm not sure. But uh, October 11th. All right, that's it for this one. I'm going to pause it and I'll start with another book. Just a second. Okay, we're going to start with some Star Wars this time and then I'll go back to the front of the book. Here's Star Wars, The Mandalorian. That's a very cool cover there. This is number two, it says. Battle with the Beastly Mudhorn. See, now I'm not sure. This sounds. This is the same thing. Unless I'm looking at the wrong the wrong book or something like that. But this is the other book. So it's kind of weird. It seems like it's the same thing. 
Let's see, look at this. this. This is the same one from the other one. Let's, let me read through this and see. Okay, battle with the beastly mudhorn. Having tracked down the valu valuable Crory, the Mandalorian must now contend with thieving bandits. Yep, it's the same thing. Will the Mandalorian battle it out with the Jawas, or is an alliance in the cards? See, it's the same one. I'm not sure why they did that. Same thing with this here. This, let me see if this is something different. Chewbacca, Han Solo, and Chewbacca number six. This is different. Here's a cover there. And here's another cover. And this one here, look at that, this guy back here. Chewbacca behind bars, it says. Okay. Chewie is held captive on the prison planet of Gol Hadar. And you'll never believe who his cellmates are. Not other than Maz Kanata and Boba Fett. And whatever happened to the Millennium Falcon? See, this stuff is coming out in August. Right here. That's why I'm starting with this one. Okay. Here we go with Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, number four, five. Very cool. The glowing, all that orange lighting and yellow lighting. Everything with the blue stuff. It looks really cool. Okay, I'm back. Uh, here we go with Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi number four or five. The other one was three or five. Some of it, like I said, this one is a repeat here, number 26 of Star Wars. We got here, and this is a cool cover here. Let's see what's going on in it. As the sandstorm overtakes his home, Obi-Wan has more time to reflect in and on the darkness. He looks back on a time when he and Anakin Skywalker were pulled off the front lines of the Clone Wars to confront a lost soul from Kenobi's wartime past. Can the two Jedi bring a man back from the heart of darkness to which he has fallen? I don't know. Wow. You see, now we got Star Wars 26 again. And this is a bigger cover. Still cool, though, with the way the white goes right into there. The Path to Victory. I won't read this one again because it, it was it's like a the same thing. I'm not sure why that why they did that. Maybe they didn't print it off or have it ready for this one. So it's gonna come maybe it's gonna be a month late instead of July, it's gonna come out in August. Unless that book said it was August, I don't know. Because they never say on the bottom of these, some of these they'll tell you when it's coming out. But this one, Marvel, it just shows you like everything, like it says here, June for August. So, I just assume that's it. Now we got Bounty Hunters. Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 26. Cool cover. Now we got the shocking ending to the Bounty Hunters raid on the Vermilion. Tonga must face Crimson Dawn on her, on her own to save the girl she seeks. Meanwhile, one of her crew may not survive Bakora's deadly revenge. And Dengar may finally be getting exactly what he deserves. Okay. Dr. Afra, Star Wars number 24. A lot of red lightsabers there. Okay. Descent. Desperate to rescue Dr. Afra at any cost, Sana Staros and her crew's search leads them to an old haunt and two familiar faces they might not survive. Uh oh. Meanwhile, Afra delves deeper into the secrets of the Ascendant and the true origin of the Spark Eternal. Hmm. I read, I read some of these, and these were, she was pretty, it was interesting stories the way they did, especially when she was interacting with um, Darth Vader. So, is her story, it sounds like this is a very good book. From just reading these, it might be a very good, interesting story to read. So, if you're reading it, let me know. Now we got Darth Vader. This is a cool cover here. Wow. Darth Vader number 26. There's a variant there. And this is Into the Sand. We all know about Anakin Skywalker's aversion to finely ground, finely ground particular matter. Particulate matter. But what does sand mean to the Dark Lord of the Sith? Uh-oh. What does it mean? When Sabe, Vader, when Sabe, Vader's unlikely new ally, goes missing, Vader must confront his own dark heart in the maelstrom of a terrible sandstorm while tapping into one of his earliest skills, 
in a wildly unexpected way. Okay. All right. Let me start at the beginning. Hey, before, before we start at the beginning, this was the next book, next page after the Star Wars one for Darth Vader. I thought this was really cool because I see this in the um, Marvel Marvelocity book from Alex Ross. He did some paintings and everything like that of the uh, project that he was working on that he was trying to pitch to uh, Marvel Comics, but I didn't know they were actually going to do something with it. So I'm like, well, look at this. An all-new Fantastic Four graphic novel by legendary artist Alex Ross. And you can bet I'm going to make sure I pick it up. I might even pick up two or three to make sure, if I can, and use one as a giveaway. This is very cool. Or two as a giveaway. We'll see. Look at this. That's the front cover there. That's cool. Includes a special poster jacket. That's cool. Yes. Some inside a two-page spread there, and it looks like it's just going to be like it's going to be um, penciled and inked and and colored, like Matt like said going over Alex's Ross Alex Ross's artwork instead of him painting it. It looks like just like anybody else's artwork that's good like this, like John Paulion. Very cool. And here's a painted cover though. I'm not sure if that's a poster or something inside. That's cool. Now we got another, um, I don't know if it's a, just one square they just um, enlarged. That is cool. And all the different colors, like the psychedelic colors, like a black light. And see, it's Fantastic Four, full circle. It's a hardcover, 8.5 by 11, and it's $24.99. I'm going to make sure I get a few of these. These are. This is going to be cool. I'm going to see, hopefully, either Midtown Comics are offered or it'll be in, from Marvel. This is cool. Let's see what this says now. Fantastic Four Full Circle is the first long-form work written and illustrated by acclaimed artist Alex Ross, who revisits a classic Stan Lee, Jack Kirby story from the 1960s and introduces the storyline for a new generation of readers. With bold, vivid colors and his trademark visual storytelling, Ross's take, Ross takes Marvel's first team of superheroes to places only he, he can illustrate. Hmm. Now we got these. I got one of these. I need to get another one so I can give away for a prize. And this is cool. They're going to do the Alex Ross mural uh, calendar for 2023. That's nice. Well, let me know if you're going to be picking this up. I'm going to make sure I get a few of these. That's cool. Only $24.99. It doesn't say how many pages it's going to be. But uh, it looks cool. And it's just different the way they're doing this. Wow. All right. I'm going to go back to the beginning just a second. Okay, here we are. This one's Marvel. This is number nine, June for August 2022. Fortnite, Marvel, Zero War, number three. The hunt for the Zero Shard heats up, and it's still got the each first print issue unlocks a digital cosmetic in Fortnite. So, cool. All right, now we got Amazing Fantasy, starring Spider-Man, issue 1000. Wow. Cool. Covered by John Romita Jr. And we got Zero, Zero War number four. Beware Dr. Doom. Now what's he controlling? He must be controlling it with some type of power and everything. Whoever's reading this, let me do, give me some details or something about it. Now we got Judgment Day. Nice art. Judgment Day number three of six. We got a variant here. Another variant down here. It's an Iron Man, one of the Celestials in the back, Wolverine, and, and um, I forgot his how to forget his name, but very cool. Let me see. Judgment Day begins. The heroes know what they have to do, but do they have to do it? They were smart enough to get themselves into this mess. <laughs> Maybe they can be smart enough to get out of it. Wow. Okay. Now we got Judgment Day, Axe, A-X-E, Judgment Day, number four of six. Really cool co covers. And I wonder, I, I, did they come up with the first Judgment Day yet? I didn't pick it up. I'm going to have to look at that and Dark Crisis. 
Let me see, I found a Dark Ages book number one at Half Price Books. I'll have to do a haul video next. Let me see, here we go with this. Very cool covers. Peach Momoko again. She's doing a lot of them. Let me see, something short with this one. The clock is ticking and midnight looms. It's not too late. Wow. Icarus, that's a, I don't know how I forgot, it just come to me. Icarus, that's the guy in the picture. Very cool. I still have yet to watch the Eternals movie. I heard it wasn't that good, but I just watched Morbius. I don't know what you think. I loved it. Me and Janet watched it. We didn't, I didn't prejudge it. I didn't do anything with it. I just watched it and accepted it for what it was. And I love Jared, Jared Leto as um, Morbius. Very awesome. The other guy was silly. Everything is his friend, Milo, and everything. And just the way they, they interact and the way they worked with each other and fought with each other and everything. It was very good. So I'm looking forward to watching more of it. Now I want to watch it again. Well, here we go with Judgment Day. Nice cover. Assad Ribic, awesome artwork. Death to the Mutants, number two of five, or two of three. That's a cool cover. Let me see. The Celestials said, correct excess deviation. Uh-oh. Now the hour of judgment is upon the Eternals. Have they done enough? And does overcompensating at this late hour make it better? Or make it worse. Mm, I would think it might make it worse. Or it might not even matter. So when you look at that, we think about it like that. So what is this now? Now we got X-Men, Judgment Day, X-Men Red. That's a cool cover there. Uh-oh, Magneto. Looks like he got hit in the head. Wow. This is X-Men Red number six. Battle for the Broken Land, an AXE tie-in. Planet Araco chose peace over war. Now war has chosen them. The monstrous arsenal of the Eternals is on the march. The Arakai must defend their broken land according to the ancient laws, but against an enemy even older than they are. Can the old ways win, or is a new Araco about to be born? Wow. Okay. Now we got Marauders number six. Nice cover. They, they're really putting out some really nice covers and everything. I wonder if the story's going to be good. All these tie ins and everything. Like I said, I did that with King in Black and I was disappointed, so I'm not sure. It might be something to look into. I might just get the main books and we'll see. Okay, this is Even Odds of Destruction and AXE tie in. The progenitor has risen. Now he visits each and every one of us, and we're given a chance to justify our lives. Wow. Sounds heavy, right? The marauders agree. Who proved to be their right to life? Who failed? And if we, and if we survive, just how excited is Orcus for a chance to scapegoat mutants for Earth's brush with destruction? Hmm. All this and Detective Lockheed. Wow. Okay, now we got Immortal X-Men number six. That's a cool cover. Playing with fire. Stand for judgment, it says. An AXE tie-in. Judgment comes and the quiet council grows suspiciously quiet. Okay. An exception. Do you think a man so devoted to the Hellfire cares one jot? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is cool. Man. That looks very uncomfortable. Now we get X-Men number 14. Was Cyclops right in AXE tie-in? Are any of the X-Men right? Only one can judge them, and the Day of Judgment is here, for good or ill, and the newest team of X-Men must face the truth about themselves and what they have done. What have they done? Is this about their lives or something like that? Like True Judgment Day? Wow. 
Now we got Judgment Day tie in here. Uh, Wolverine number 24. Wow, look at these things. Hell on Earth. Okay. The Hand's Hell Ride seeks revenge on Wolverine and Solem. Okay. But with Earth reeling from the revelations of AXE, a dire play for the best there is may be the planet's last best hope. All right. Now we got X-Force number 31. Another tie-in for Judgment Day. Craven's Mutant Hunt. Mutants have staked their claim as the dominant species. That just means it's time for Craven's for Craven to prove once more he's the apex predator. Benjamin Percy's saga continues with a Craven tale unlike any other, sure to reverberate for decades to come. Wow. Now we got a tie-in with the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh-oh, Peter looks shocked. He's seeing Gwen Stacy. Spider-Man number 10. Amazing Spider-Man number 10. Judgment Day tie-in. Okay, it's time for Spider-Man to be judged. And I think we all know which moment of Spidey's history is going to weigh heavily on the proceedings. You don't want to miss this very special issue that might just break your heart all over again. Wow. I wonder who came up with this concept, this premise, or this idea, this storyline, Judgment Day, and how they're how they're picking what to do with it. Because there's so many titles that tie in and bring this about. Wow. Okay, now we got the Fantastic Four one, and we got Avengers one, tie in. So these will probably be maybe the last two. I'll see. Fantastic Four number forty-seven. There's a variant down here. Different versions of um, Mrs. Fantastic or um, Miss Invisible Girl. What do they, they call her, the Invisible Woman now? Judgment Day tie in. The taking of Baxter 1234 begins now. With judgment looming over the Marvel Universe, Reed Richards has locked himself in his think tank in search of answers. But with the, late, with the fate of humanity on the line, what happens when Arbolet Midas? sets her sights on the Baxter building as the Fantastic Four falls before the Exterminatrix Death Traps. Exterminatrix's Death Traps. Only one hero remains standing. But if you thought Ob 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 Obliette was dangerous, it's nothing compared to what the Invisible Woman, yet it's, it's an Invisible Woman now, is capable of. Get ready for Die Hard in the Baxter building as we've, as we've only... Got one thing left to say. yippee ki Marvel Universe. <laughs> okay, now we got the Avengers tie-in here. Cool cover. Uh-oh. Hawkeye's blind or something? She's taking over him somehow. Avengers number 60, it says. Judgment Day tie-in. The Avengers Ace Archer is back. As Judgment Day looms, Hawkeye is called upon to justify his existence. As a benchmark... Hawkeye must prove that he brings at least as much joy and usefulness to the world as a randomly chosen mailbox, which, admittedly, is a pretty high bar. Wow. Imagine having to justify your uh, existence and seeing what you're going to do, if you're going to still be here. And I, I'm, What are they going to do, take them out? They're going to send them somewhere? Or what? Well, I'm going to do these here, and I'll see if I can finish. This is Zero War. There's a var variant here. They got three variants to it. Wow. Fortnite and Marvel. This is Zero War number three of five. Okay. The return of an unlikely ally brings Iron Man and the Foundation closer to their goal. Meanwhile, it's an all-out brawl against Stegron and his dinosaur hybrids in the Savage Land as the hunt for the Zero Shard heats up. But Stegron's not the only villain interested in the Zero Shard. Okay. Now we got this one here. Zero War. We got Doom on the first one. This is number four. Different variants here. Doom there. What is that? Patch. Okay. Dancing. Okay. We got Captain America Falcon combined. Fortnite, this is number four or five. 
All right, the most dangerous person in the Marvel Universe is thrown in with some of the most dangerous people in the Fort Fortnite Universe. But what does Doom really want? And how far will he go to get it? Okay. Let's see what's next. Just a second. All right, the last one here, we got Amazing Fantasy number 1000. Look at all the different co covers here we got. Peach Momoko there. Very cool. And then we John Romita Jr. Okay, it says the comic that brought you Spider-Man hits issue 1000. We're going to we're going big to celebrate in this one our 1000th our thousandth issue of Amazing Fantasy. An all-star roster of creators are coming together to celebrate Peter Parker and Spider-Man's birthdays. Wow. That looks really cool. All right, I'm ending it off with this one. I'm going to come back and do another video soon, right after this. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Collected Dude is out.